Hey, Tom here from The Run Testers with another big running shoe guide. Before I go into that, this video is brought to you by the team over at Precision Fuel and Hydration. More about the products that those guys have in a bit. So the video is covering the best shoes in each of our rotations. We've done this video before. We use, all seem to like it. You all seem to find it very useful. What we'll be doing is going through three shoes that sit in our rotation. So that would be our comfy shoe for long, slow, easy miles, our daily training shoe, which is probably something for versatility that you can use for different types of runs, and our race shoe. Now, the run testers are all different types of runners, as you probably know. So some of those classifications may differ slightly depending on the type of runner that um, is talking. So let's just jump straight in and see what we all picked. If you're watching this video, you probably already know that getting the right pair of running shoes can have a big impact on your running. But what you also probably know is that getting the right fuel and hydration also has a big aspect on how successful your training is. This video is supported by the team over at Precision Fuel and Hydration, who have loads of tools that can help you get the right eating and drinking strategies for all of your training and racing. And if you want to find out more about that, you can check out a series of videos that we did with co-founder Andy Blow by clicking in the links in the caption below. And don't forget that by using the code RT15 on the Precision Fuel and Hydration website, you can get a discount across all of their products so that you can train effectively and meet your goals. Okay, so Nick, we're talking favorite running shoes. Um, what is your pick? Let's just dive straight in. What is your pick for favorite easy shoe at the moment? So I'm going to be really boring in this video, Tom, in that anyone who's watched any of the previous ones, they might already be able to guess my three shoe rotation because it hasn't really changed aside from just picking the latest version. So my easy shoe, and this is just my, the easiest pick actually of the three is the Puma Velocity Nitro 2. I, I love this shoe. Um, I use it for lots of easy miles, lots of easy to steady progression runs, which is kind of my normal kind of base training run. And I've used it for speed work as well. And I actually have a training diary where every single run I put uh, my kind of rate of perceived exertion, like I rate it out of 10. And I also get a little smiley face just to say how I feel on the run. I don't think I've ever had a run in the shoe where I just didn't end up with a big smiley face in that training diary it just it feels comfy cushioned bouncy on easy uh, and just really lovely just cruising around and then it's fast when you actually want it to be it's a pretty versatile shoe and it's got great grip and i run a lot especially through like spring summer autumn in the forest near me and it's nice being able to go in there in my easy shoe without worrying that the light trails are going to be too much for it so it just does it all and it's really cheap and like, i really do think that's you mentioned just at the end because i'm picking this over any shoe i've got 150 200 pound cushioned daily trainers and actually this is the best of them and it's hundred pounds. Right. Well, I don't. I don't think the list, uh, the viewers, need to hear any more about that because they're probably going to hear about this in every other video we do about oh, shoes over the next few coming. months. <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's put that shoe aside for at least half an hour, uh, and let's dive into daily shoes. So daily shoes, we're talking something you can use. It's a bit more versatile. You just have. You can go and do any sort of run in the day, part of your training. If you want to go easy, you, one shoe can do it all. What do you go for? So for this, uh, because the Puma is already pretty versatile, I've actually focused much more on the speed end of things, um, and uh, and it's the Saucony Endorphin Speed Two, Tom, which I've mentioned in every single video I've ever done on the. You're not winning any su surprise awards <laughs> this time. Uh -huh. This shoe's obviously fantastic. Like, I think it can do it all. It's a great all-rounder as well as being a very good speed shoe and a great racing shoe. Like, it's a bit softer than a lot of carbon shoes because it's only got a nylon plate, but it still delivers a fantastic level of performance with a PIBA-based foam plate, really smooth rocker motion. But I will surprise you a little bit, Tom, in saying that this is the shoe that came closest to falling out of my rotation this year. And it's Ooh. primarily because I've been doing a lot more really fast Stop speed press. <laughs> and I do want to give a big shout out here. The shoe that nearly replaced it, which is the Adidas Takumi Sen 8, which is probably my favorite new, completely new shoe I've tried for a long time um, I love racing in it I love doing sessions in it and actually with the Puma being so versatile it ticks off so much of my daily and steady you know easy and steady training and tempo runs that the speed actually isn't as needed really because I have a full rotation if you're only buying one shoe definitely buy the speed but it's definitely a case of saying if you are buying a pure fast trainer to pair with something like the Velocity Nitro Takumi Sen is fantastic it's very lightweight it's got Light Strike Pro uh, midsole. It's got energy rods at the front. It comes in well under 200 grams. I've raced a half marathon in it though. It's still quite protective. I've done long training sessions. There's a lot to love about this shoe. So I do want to give it a big shout out. But yeah, if it comes to it, Northern Speed is still the one I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to pick because it's, you know, it's, it's the best. It's the best shoe. <laughs> yeah, for, for anyone watching this, um, 
Nick's been messaging me on WhatsApp all week going, I don't know what to choose. I don't know what to choose. So, yeah, understand that he's he's really had his heart torn making this decision. Uh, all right. Like that- oh, sorry. I always say quickly talk. Cause I, I, get, I get people comment and say, oh, you mentioned the endorphin speed again. But I think that's that's a good thing because it shows that, you know, if a shoe is the best, we're not going to tell you it's not the best just because a new shoe's come out. Eventually, <laughs> something will replace this and we'll tell you then. But until then, just keep buying the endorphin speed. <laughs> well, this this full this this is uh, goes into your next choice, uh, so I won't make my point yet. But what have you got for favourite ratio? It's the Alpha Fly, uh, still the Alpha Fly. Um, I think obviously it's a really build more as a marathon racing shoe. It does do a great job across other distances. It's my favourite half marathon racing shoe as well. But primarily, my goal each year is a big marathon. I'm doing a couple in you know the autumn, and that's why my racing shoe I think has to be the shoe I prefer for the marathon. And that's the Alpha Fly. Like last year, I ran two twenty nine in it. I ran a two thirty three in it. It's very fast. It's ridiculously comfortable. It's cushioned. It's holding up, holding up pretty well. I, you know, this is the original version that came out when it first launched a few years back, and you know the outsole looks a bit worn. You know where the foam is exposed, but actually, it's durable. It still provides a lot of bounce. I had a massive crisis before the London Marathon last year that I thought oh, maybe I'll put two miles on this and it won't perform. And then I went and did out a really hard like 27k workout on it, and it was fantastic. And it was brilliant on race day. I just had a slight blow up in the second half of London for other reasons. So yeah, it's the best marathon racer. It's protective. It's cruisy. It's poppy i like it more than the vaporfly in that it, i think it just helps you lock on to that slightly slower race pace and just maintain it you know for the full distance um mm. and so that's why it remains my top pick in the racing shoe category well i, I as as you know i ran my pb in bilbao in the <laughs> alpha fly and um i i yeah it's i i did really did enjoy it i think it was a great shoe and uh, you know it must be doing something right if it's getting me a, a 15 minute PB. So um, I'll take that. Uh, but yeah, that's that's great. Thanks for all those choices. Um, let's uh, move on to the next person. Yeah, I'll see you next year to pick those three shoes again. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me. <laughs> all right, Tom. You're the master of ceremonies here, but I'm going to quiz you on your favourite shoes. Uh, you probably maybe have varied your selections a little bit more than me, but yeah, what's your kind of cushioned shoe pick? So the cushioned shoe pick is probably the biggest change for me this year. Um, let me find it in my pile of shoes here. <laughs> so this is the New Balance. If, if you watch the channel, I've done so many videos on this shoe recently <laughs> that you probably already knew that I was going to pick this. The New Balance Fresh Foam More V3. Now, I, I like cushioned shoes. Over the past six months, I've really started to just run in cushion shoes all the time. And the more cushioned, the better for me. I'm absolutely just a a cushion fan these days. Um, But the more V3 came along and I'd heard about it. In fact, a lot of people commented in in, uh, to our videos saying, why why don't you cover the more V3 when we've been doing cushion shoes? So I got I got a pair of them and I was blown away. They're just fantastic. I think the thing about the more V3 is that it is you can see it's a very cushion shoe. It's massive chunky wedge of cushioning there but that fresh foam midsole is not traditionally really cushioned if you ever tried the 1080 v10 v11 yes there's there's a lot of cushioning in it but it's not that soft it's quite a a balanced foam um but with the more v3 there's just loads more of it and so it it does become noticeably softer but still has just a little bit of firmness so that you can um i wouldn't say run at a faster pace but you just feel in control of the run and it's just so comfortable. I absolutely just love going for it. If, if I go out for a run and I'm not testing shoes, I just want to put this on because I just think, oh, it's just going to be a nice run. <laughs> and it's a relatively new line, I guess, from New Balance. But it, and there's a new, a new version coming out, which I'm sure you're desperate to get your hands on. But it's probably, they're probably not going to change too much right now, given how popular it's been, I guess. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's yeah, absolutely great shoe. My favourite cushion shoe of the moment, um, which <laughs> it knocked the uh, Glycerin 19 off the top spot for me, and that had been on for quite a long time. Yeah, Glycerin was a big favourite, but it's gone now. It's gone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now let's move on to your second pick, which would be, yeah, your kind of more daily mile shoe, your daily trainer. What have you gone for? Right, so this is a bit of an interesting one because it's the first time I've picked this as a daily trainer, but... I've got more into cushioning these days, so my, <laughs> my conversation has changed slightly. I think <laughs> maybe if you if I'd done this last year, and I think I picked this last year, it was the Speed Two. Um, but I've been training slightly differently, um, not not my injury training, but even before then, um, it's sort of adjusting my training to more steady miles, doing a lot more steady miles as opposed to doing a speed work. Um, throughout the week. So I do do speed work, but I tend to do designated sessions for that a lot on the track. So because of that, the everyday shoe I've gone for is the Asics Nova Blast 2, um, just because it's got a lot of cushioning in it, but it's still 
quite bouncy and it's still I, I can still run quite fast in it if I want to. So when I'm going out for a run, I, I, I want to go out for a run in this. I don't know how I'm going to go, how fast I'm going to go some days when I go out for a run, but I can go faster if I want to. And I, but if I don't, I can still run and enjoy it. Fantastic. Yeah, it's a lovely comfy shoe. I, I, I find it more, yeah, I used it more for kind of cushioned easy stuff, but I know you've always been a long fan of its versatility for sure. And now moving on to the non-versatile shoe, let's go into the pure, the pure speedster. Um, let's go with what is your ratio? All right, sorry people, <laughs> just going to bore you again. Um, it's the on so, cloud monster. Luckily, Nick didn't choose this, so at least it's not <laughs> all one-sided. N- Nike Vaporfly Next Percent Two, um, or the One. I mean, I don't really feel much of a difference between between either of them. Um, I've actually done a lot more miles in the One, but the Vaporfly Two is still the best ratio for me. It's it's just every time I run in it, I my fastest times were always in this shoe. I can't find any shoe that feels like it. It's light, it's propulsive, it's bouncy. And I think there's a thing about the Vaporfly where once you put it on, it sort of, you just feel like you can run faster. It, it's 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 such a strange thing. And people watching this looking and going, oh, they're, they're talking about the Vaporfly again. <laughs> we don't, it's not our choice. Like, uh, well, it is our choice. But if there was a shoe that came along that wasn't the Vaporfly, we, we're desperate for that to happen. And it's just, for us, it just hasn't, well, apart from Nick, who's chosen the Outfly, but Outfly, uh, uh, the second pick that you'd have is probably the Vaporfly, isn't it? Uh, oh, I don't need to comment on that. I just didn't pick it. I'm just a bit more original, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I, I base it on how fast I run in it and how it feels. And the Vaporfly 2, I have my best races in it. And that's all I want for race day. I want to run the fastest and in the shoe that makes me be able to do that. And that's the Vaporfly, uh, well, uh, Vaporfly 2. And I absolutely love that shoe. If I can cut into them as a, as a big Alphafly stand and just point out that you, you did run your marathon PB in the Alphafly and huh, maybe you should show yes. a bit more respect. <laughs> well, I, 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 I owe a lot to the uh, the Alphafly, but I also think I would have done faster if I did it in the Vaporfly. <laughs> Might not have fallen apart uh, if you were using a Vaporfly as well. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, all right, fantastic. Three good choices. Uh, really, really original with your racing shoe there. Nice one. Uh, <laughs> uh, thanks very much. Cheers. So for my Easy Mile shoes in the rotation right now, I've got this. This is the On Cloud Monster. Tested it very recently, and there's a review on the channel that you'll find around now. I like this shoe basically because I think it's got a really good kind of balance of good stability. It's soft without being too soft. It's, it's definitely on the softest shoe to date. So if you think about On's shoes running firm, this one, because of those bigger clouds and a kind of slightly sort of softer helium foam in there, they are collapsing a little bit more than you'll find on other shoes. I just find it's got plenty of room up top and it's got a kind of big kind of rocker sort of geometry, which I find for me personally helps me roll through those kind of easy runs nice and sort of steady, helps kind of save my legs. It's good protective kind of for long hour runs. You know, I've done sort of three hours more in this shoe. And so for those runs where I'm sort of keeping my heart rate really, really low, I find this a shoe really easy to lace up, nice and comfortable, just about the right amount of cushioning to just kind of clip along using that kind of, get, getting that kind of rocker working. Uh, it's a little bit heavier, but you know, when, you're, when I'm moving like that, I don't really mind carrying a little bit more weight on my shoe. It doesn't feel too kind of clunky and cumbersome. So yeah, for my easy miles right now, those really, really ploddy easy miles, I'm using the OnCloud Monster. Now, next up for my daily trainer, I've got to give a shout out to this, which is the Socony Endorphin Speed 2. This is a fantastic daily trainer. A personal favorite, you cannot go wrong with this. Super versatile, brilliant shoe, but, more recently, this little fella in the background, the Puma Velocity Nitro 2 has popped along at a very, very cheap price. And it's of such good value for money. It's got such good versatility. It's much, I find it better than the original Velocity Nitro. Uh, it's not too soft, not too squishy, just right. It's got a really good balance, kind of midsole construction, I think. Good stability, the upper comfort is great. Plenty of cushioning. And its versatility, I think, is sort of second to none. I've run in this at very sort of slow miles, but also done uh, quicker racing, kind of half marathon. I've also done intervals in it. And I do think this shoe has a really good range, which is why I've picked it as my daily trainer. It's a shoe that you really like to put on. Every time I look at my pile, you know, this is a shoe that I think, oh, actually, I'd, r- I'd rather run in that one today than maybe some of the others that I'm testing at the time. It's always kind of calling to me saying, put me on. That is a sign of a great shoe as far as I'm concerned. So yeah, I think this shoe has an awful lot going for it. And the price tag basically makes it an all-round bargain, a really, really great daily trainer. 
Then for my race pick, I mean, this isn't going to startle anyone. We talk about this shoe an awful lot on the channel. It's been out for a few years in one sort of variation or another, but it's still the top dog as far as I'm concerned. You guys also voted for it in our poll, which was about which shoes you guys would choose to race in as well. It is the Nike Vaporfly Next Percent 2. It's still, for me, the best racing shoe out there. It's light, it's kind of punchy, agile, it's kind of comfortable as well for that kind of racing when you know you're gonna be sort of out going, tacking into a marathon basically. You know, I, I just think this is still, for me, the best kind of race shoe going. It makes me, when I lace it on in the morning of a race, I'm like, I'm ready to go now. This is a shoe that makes me get up on my toes and feel like I'm gonna go chasing personal best, which is exactly what you want in a race shoe as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, I didn't really get on too much with the Alpha Fly. So I still think of all the carbon racing shoes going, the Vaporfly Next Percent 2 is still the top dog. Well, I'm looking for kind of an easy running shoe, something to go, you know, long and steady, you know, pressure's off, you know, just go out, enjoy the run. Um, I'm looking for a nice, comfortable upper. You would be in any shoe, but I think comfort is definitely a priority there. And then for me, I like the kind of softer side of cushioning as well so that's definitely something that i would look for in my kind of easy shoe so the one that i've kind of settled on um is this the sock triumph 19 so the 20 is coming out soon uh, the 19 is still out this is still the most recent model um for me you know it's a really nice upper on here you know nice kind of spongy tongue spongy laces just about enough padding uh, here and you know you get a nice kind of accommodating upper in general anyway and then when you look at the kind of midsole and what you're getting here underfoot you know it's very very plush when you run on with this shoe um, and that's what i like it's nice soft you know i want that kind of feeling under you know when i'm running um kind of those kind of easier miles or easier runs um and that's what i think you get on the Sockney triumph 19 um it's just been a solid shoe for me i don't really regret every time i kind of put this on and i just want to go and run and not really think about my time um we're not really you know, training for anything particular um and just want kind of mileage in the legs as well so yeah my kind of top kind of easy shoe pick is this the Saucony Triumph 19. For daily shoe pick now this is a really difficult one for me because I definitely think there's a few shoes that I have in this space that kind of works for me in my rotation but I had to think about the one that worked best in terms of what I really look for in a daily trainer so something I think I can kind of ease off with the pace and still kind of go run longer and still feel like I'm running you know in a comfortable shoe that can kind of hold up on those longer distances but also if I want to inject a little bit of speed in those sessions or I want something that can work well for kind of speed sessions as well that is a shoe I would or criteria I'd look for for a daily trainer so what I've gone for is this this is the hocker mac 4 so i had the endorphin speed 2 i think the pure velocity nitro 2 as well kind of in the mix this is the one i've kind of settled on i think for a couple of things i think mainly i just think the upper is nice soft and comfortable it's something i i've, I've always slipped on and i've never really regretted or felt uncomfortable wearing this shoe uh, for all the sessions that i've done in kind of daily trainer style sessions um i think the level of cushioning and the responsiveness you get from this midsole is ideal for me i like it kind of it kind of veers a little bit more and going on that kind of quicker stuff but you can kind of pair things back but i like the fact that you can go a little bit quick and it feels nice to run a little bit quick in this shoe as well so my daily trainer pick is this the hocker mac fall very closely pushed by the Sockney endorphin speed 2 and the pure velocity nitro 2 which i think is a little bit nicer going at easier paces but i think this kind of is what fits best for me the one that's kind of i kind of go to um kind of my daily training sessions so my race shoe pick would be this this is the asics meta speed sky now i would say race shoe pick in terms of my half marathon and marathon distance i think the short stuff i would still go for the hocker rocket x but for those kind of bigger races which i kind of view as bigger races, the half marathon marathon distance this is a shoe i would go for now i haven't spent enough time in the meta speed sky plus to say it is an obvious instant kind of upgrade for me but at the moment this is what's worked for me in my training and in my races um and it's kind of key in terms of my shoe rotation it's a shoe that i've used when i'm training or doing my training runs at marathon pace and then when it comes to race day 
that's when I'll use this shoe. The reason I use this shoe as well, there's definitely a question mark about the durability of this shoe. So it's one you do kind of have to save for those occasions where you want to run a little bit quicker. That's kind of what I've done with this shoe. Um, it's just nice and light to run in. Um, the level of cushioning and the, the way it feels throughout a run or, you know, when you if you stick to your kind of consistent marathon pace in this shoe, it works really well. You slow up, it's a bit more of a struggle, but if you can maintain that kind of quicker speed in the shoe, that's why I think it's really worked well for me. And that's why it's still in my rotation. So yeah, could be potentially the Metaspeed Sky Plus, not enough running in that yet, but this is my kind of top race shoe pick in my rotation. Thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and click that little bell icon. It really does make a difference. And check the channel out for all the other videos we've got from the latest road and trail shoes, as well as running watches and headphones out at the moment. Don't forget to check out Precision Fuel and Hydration, where you can get your 15% discount across all of the store using the code RT15. You can find the link in the caption below. Thanks a lot for watching. See you soon.